Grade 12s, if you're about to write your theory exam or paper two, then this is our last video in the video series where we talk about the exam paper and what you can do to prepare. Our first video, we talked about the short questions. The next video, we looked about the theoretical questions, for example, the hardware, the software, the networks, the internets. Now, this video is going to be where the CAT and the IT papers differ quite a bit. So I will put timestamps in the video description so you can jump around to the parts where we talk about your particular paper so make sure cat students that you jump to the two sections that we're going to talk about for you rt students there'll be two sections that we will also mention for you and then at the end i'll give some final tips for everyone so make sure that you jump around to the parts that you want to cover so cat students let's start with you so we've already talked about your exam paper being 25 mark short questions and then there's an integrated scenario question at the end there may be some practical questions in there but i'm talking mainly about the part of section b that relates to the practical question so let's go down to question six so question six over here is a 10 mark question and it relates to information management and this tends to be questions that relate to your pet or relate to how you manage information and this is a very difficult section to prepare for unless you've done your pet if you've done your pet then you can answer a lot of these questions based on experience because you've experienced your pet and therefore you'll be able to answer them like what's the importance of report writing you can see here it's about giving a summary of your findings about identifying a clear task so it's a one mark question, but there's lots of options and you would know this if you did your patch. When we did the evaluation of websites, what, how did we evaluate it? Do you remember we evaluated if it was current, if it was up to date? Is it unbiased? So all those concepts, they are in your textbook, but a lot of this you can answer from just having experienced the patch. So that's going to be your key. Trying to see what type of questions they ask over multiple exam papers is going to be useful to you. Go do the question six of multiple exam papers and go look at the memo and go see, oh, what are they looking for? That's going to be the best way to approach this particular question. If you've done your pet, it should be quite intuitive. You should be able to answer most of them. And the ones that you don't, go look at the memos and see what they're looking for. And if you haven't done your pet, then really go and look at a whole bunch of exam papers at their question six and go see if you can answer as many of them as you can. Get used to the type of questions. You'll see that they'll start repeating. Then question eight, this is the practical component where we're going to get asked questions about HTML, we're going to get asked questions about databases, about Word, about Excel. And if you've been working with those packages, then you will know a lot of these as well. So identifying, for example, errors, like over here, they say give two reasons why the function returns a zero over here. So yeah, you can see it says some B7, but you can see B7 over here, B7 to B13, that is is all words that's not going to be able to sum words that's why it's going to return zero or maybe they're using the wrong formula maybe they want to count how many items there are and then they must use the count a there you can see the options that they give you so this is going to come from a lot from experience and they can as you can see they can ask things on excel they can ask things on word sometimes they will even ask you to write a formula that you would use in an excel spreadsheet or write the html code that you need for a particular thing so this section is about 15 marks it tends to be closely based to your practical experience so there's about 50 marks for this and about and about 10 marks related to the pad that's about 25 marks and they come down a lot to your experience if you really struggle with these questions then maybe the better idea is to focus on the other questions which you can study for where you have content for and that way you can try get as many marks for those sections and take the pressure off of these because maybe you can get a couple of these because you've got some experience but if you really do struggle with these practical questions trying to gain all that experience now is going to be very difficult all these questions relate a lot to things that you've experienced in the classroom or in your pet or in your prac exams and so if you do well at prac you're probably going to do well at this question but if you don't then i would suggest focusing on the other sections making sure you know all your other theory work really well and now the IT students, your question four is going to be about data and information management. This is going to relate a lot to databases. They'll probably give you a table and ask you questions about it, about things like primary keys. They might even ask you to redesign this table or split it into two tables. For example, if you want to normalize it, that seems to be a big question they ask as well. They can also ask a lot of theoretical aspects. This relates to the different types of database, like distributed databases or what is validation, what what is a server database so they could ask you the theoretical concepts on databases they can do that as well and things like collecting data would also fall under this so what are rfid tags what's an audit trail so there's a chapter in your textbook which relates particularly to the theory of databases and data collection data mining data warehousing all of that would probably come in this section so there's definitely some theory that you can study but there will be some 
practically applied questions, for example, on the databases are. Maybe they're going to ask you to write some code that will go through a database. Maybe they'll talk about anomalies. Those are often things that they like to talk. Identify a primary key. Those are the concepts that they like to ask when it comes to data and information. There you can see question B. They, we must design this table so that it's split into two tables. And there you can see when you're doing that design of two tables, make sure that you indicate the name of the table. You need to indicate the relationship of the table. You need to indicate what's the primary key and what's the foreign key. And normally you need to put like it's a one to many relationship or something like that. So make sure that you indicate all those elements. And remember, your primary key connects to a foreign key. It's not your primary key connects to the primary key. So the primary key of one table connects to the same type of field in another table, but this one is what connects the two. So if we look at this one, so these are the details of the learner and they have a registered class and there's the detail of the registered class that has a teacher. Now a learner will only have one registered class, so there will probably be a one to one relationship here. But a lot of the time, the primary key tends to be a one and the foreign key tends to be a many. In this case, not so much, but it does tend to be a one to many relationship. Primary key is the one, foreign key is a many in majority of cases. So that's question four of the IT paper. Question five tends to revolve around programming. So they're going to give you some code. They're going to ask you questions on the code. Here's where you would focus on understanding the key algorithms, the algorithms like your sort algorithm, your search algorithm for arrays, removing duplicates, adding or removing items from an array. You're going through a text file algorithm. Those main algorithms that you use all the time, that's what they would probably ask. That's what they tend to look at and ask you questions on that. They could ask you concepts like what is initialization? Well, there's quite easy that we can see that is initialization and the looping would be the for loop over there. So yeah, they've given a flow chart. A flow chart is just another way of writing code. They could use pseudocode, which is just everyday language. So it doesn't look like Delphi, but it's just laying out the steps. This is just a normal statement. That's an input or an output. That's a decision. That's normally an if statement or a condition when we do a loop. And there you can see the loop coming back. So you can follow this flow chart quite easily and know your trace tables. So yeah, they've showed you what a trace table is. I've got a video that explains trace tables. Make sure that you watch that to make sure that you understand how to lay out your trace tables. There's normally a column for each and every variable. You could also have a true false column, which you'll use whenever you have a question where you can say it's true or false. And then there's normally a display column. So go check out that video about trace tables. That's very important. And then they're going to ask you questions about objects. So know about your UML diagrams. Know that the negative mean private and the positives mean public. Know what the different types of methods are, the constructor, the auxiliary, the mutators, the accessor methods. Know what they're all about, the theoretical concepts of them. And that tends to be in the 20 odd range, 20 to 25 range. So there will be some theoretical aspects about Delphi. There will be some applications of it. You either identifying code, what you would change to code, trace tables. But that tends to be the trend for question five of, of the IT theory exam. There we go. We've discussed both the papers. My last tip for both CAT and IT students is when you are getting to the last few days before the exam, first, your first job is to know the concepts. As I said, know what each concept is, know what the different types are of that concept, know the advantages and disadvantages or the benefits of it, know how it works. If it's a negative thing, ask yourself, what does it do? What makes it negative? What impact does it have? How do you get this negative thing? How do you Get rid of it if you've got it. How do you prevent it? Ask yourself those questions on all those concepts. Once you know those concepts in your head, then you can start going through exam papers. And so then if you are getting close to the exam, I would really recommend that you go through exam papers. If you go to EC exams, you can come here to exam papers over there. And if you scroll down, you'll see grade 12. You'll see a whole bunch of papers. Both June and the November papers will be very useful. And you're looking for the May, June. Those are the supplementary ones. Whoever sets the November paper tends to also set the June paper. So you get double the practice. So these are normally the rewrite papers. So they are just as good to practice on. And remember those exam guidelines are for 2021 and above. So I would go up until 2020. If you want some more examples, go beyond it. But really focus on last year up until 2021. You can go look at a couple of September papers, but I would tend to focus on mainly November National Senior Certificate papers and the May, June ones. If you are confident, go through a whole paper and practice getting all the questions done in one go. If you are not as confident, take a couple of exam papers and go through just the systems technology questions of two or three. You'll start to see the same type of questions start to appear and you'll be revising all of them again as you get those questions repeated.
and then start doing a couple of networking internet questions and so on and so on and then start doing a few questions on the pad by doing it in sections like that you can actually maximize your time by learning a whole bunch of information quite quickly so use multiple exam papers by taking it question by question and if you don't know a concept let's say you don't know what virtual reality is either go to your textbook to find it go to a video to find it or you can use this it's an AI called index.globe.engineer. You can come here and just ask it what is virtual reality. You can ask it a question and it will give you the definition. You can press enter if you want more information on it. There it shows you what the components are. So you can use AI to help you learn as well. If you can't find the concept in your textbook and you need to save time, use AI. You can also use the question component to say, ask me questions. I'm asking the AI to ask me questions about viruses on computers and it's almost like giving yourself a little bit of a quiz and you can type in your answer. If you type it in completely wrong, it will tell you in red that it's wrong. If you give it a slightly better answer, it will give it green to say that you got the question right and it explains them quite nicely. So index.global engineer is a really useful website for that. And don't forget, I've also got flashcards which can help you prepare for your exams by just helping you just go through questions and see if you know the answers. That uses the app called Gizmo. You can download the app on your phone. You can even do it through a browser. And this video tells you exactly how to set it up. It tells you how to search for my flashcards. I've got a whole bunch for CAT and IT students, which will be updated with new questions just to help you even more. And if you can't get them, don't forget at the end of the video, there's a link that you can use if you are struggling to find them on the app. So those are the resources that are really going to help you with your exam. Good luck, grade 12s. I hope it goes well. I know theory is often a section that a lot of students don't enjoy and they get frustrated with. But if you put the right strategies in place, I'm sure not only will you get more confident, but you'll actually enjoy learning some of those concepts because there is important information that you're going to use when you leave school. So you might as well absorb that information now. So get stuck in, into your notes. Go check out those PowerPoints. Go look at the videos on Atmos Long Computer Terms. Use AI if you get stuck. Test yourself out with those gizmos flashcards. And by doing that, I'm sure you're going to end up doing it the Mr. Long way. Good luck, grade 12s. I hope the exam goes really well for you. I know you can do it. Don't forget to go and subscribe to the at Mr. Long Computer Terms channel. It's different to this one. That has all the theory videos that you need to help prepare for the exams. Make sure that you also subscribe here and leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.